When I was young, my father looked at me and he said, if you want to play, you better lace up. Big Rapids, Michigan. A small town with beautiful scenery, some local businesses, and Ferris State University. Big Rapids is located approximately 50 miles north of Grand Rapids and is home to one of the most competitive hockey teams in the nation. The team has been on a roll this season with a 17-8-3 record and being the first place team in the CCHA and the sixth place team in the nation. They started their season off strong, winning 10 out of their first 12 games. Although there was a moment of struggle when the team went on to lose five of their next six games. But ever since the new year, the Bulldogs are on top of their game, being undefeated thus far in 2012. Now coming home from their most recent successful weekend against Northern Michigan University, the team arrives home at 4.45 a.m. Sunday morning, giving them 28 hours to rest before they are back at the rink preparing for Notre Dame next weekend. Before the team makes their way onto the ice for their 10.30 a.m. practice, they chat amongst themselves in the locker room before they hit the gym for their dry land training. During this time, Chad Billens and Tommy Hill continue a long team tradition. After every game that Ferris wins, a puck is taped to a hockey lace and hung from a stick in the center of the locker room. On this puck, Billens writes the number of games won this year, the teams they played, and the score. This puck is win number 19 for the Bulldogs, and just two more is needed to tie last year's total of 21. That high. Higher, Tom. <laughs> Do too much. Lower. Higher, higher. I think mean, that's pretty good. Tom, you want to even, not cricket. Yeah, you also know, thought the team was good. Did? <laughs> what? After the team toys with Tommy, Jordy and Graham get a little surprise. <laughs> okay, well this guy, he, uh, he accompanies me on the road and uh, as my pillow and somehow before last weekend here, uh, I had it on my bed to go and it disappeared so we spent probably 25 minutes trying to find it. Actually a couple guys, me and my roommate Kyle Bonus over there, we spent some time looking for it, couldn't find it so we ended up going on a trip without it, which who knows, we got four out of six points, probably cost us two. <laughs> Anyways, when we got home, it was in Derek Graham's stall, which I think is a little suspicious because he said he knew nothing about it. So either he's lying or coaches played a little bit of a prank on me, so we'll have to find out. I'll be doing some investigative work this week. <laughs> you know what? Skippy is my dog. It is. I have a dog named Skippy. I don't know. I just bring him in once in a while. That's about all I know, Mike. Alright boys, we got lift downstairs, warm up in the rubber room first, couple things for the freshman to grab. On the ice, 11.15. Oh, oh, oh. Since doesn't normally do that, he did it for FaceTime. So after a quick stretch and warm up, the fun and games come to a minimum. And a hard circuit training workout is done, working various core muscles in the body. Something that's been passed down on me from guys like Mike Ambach, Scott White, Becca, Zach Redmond. And uh, it's a little trick that some of those guys use. Not many of us know about it. But if you don't think you're getting enough of a sweat in, just kind of go like that. You go like that. A little bit more on the chest and stuff. And just go upstairs after the coach thinks you got a little extra in. You know, it just helps out getting in the lineup and stuff like that. Pretty big. Yeah, there's water on himself everywhere. He thinks he's pulling somebody back. Let him. Cool. 
After a hard workout and a little bit of Jordy's humor, the team heads back upstairs to get dressed for practice. Today's skate is going to be a little lighter, so the team doesn't get as worn out. Each practice in the week gets progressively tougher, but not in just a physical sense, but a mental sense too. By no means will this be an easy week preparing for Notre Dame. Alright, gonna do the Buckeye two on one, don't forget. It's where this guy will start with a puck. He takes off skating. This forward, you wait, then you take off hard. He makes a good feed on the tape. This D's coming out. He collects it, he makes the feed. He's got to back skate a bit. Come in, play the middle, get some puck movement, shoot, then you come out. So we got a little crispness to it. You're not just out here standing flat footed. All right, here we go, boys. Hit the net now. As the players change, it is seen that Skip the Pillow Pet went missing again, but Skip was found shortly later by Justin DiMartino in the stall of absent player Garrett Thompson. G -G -G -G. Skip was stolen, and we actually lost him for a little while there. And uh, there's a lot of people that we, you know, kind of figured it could be CJ Mott, obviously high on the list. Where was he? He was in G stall. I don't know where you put him. Yeah, I would have put him six feet higher. He's got a list, which uh, I don't know if he's ever talked to you about, but he, he's quite scary. I mean, I'm hearing a lot about this list. Uh, I don't know where everyone's getting this from. Um, I don't know if my Christmas list. This list started, kind of started around Christmas time, so I don't know if it's a Christmas list or a list of homework, a list of activities I got to do that day. I mean, there's lots of lists. So I'm not sure which one uh, everyone's talking about here. If Jordy can't, like, really really handle Skip, I mean, I don't, I think you should give him to someone else. If I could take Skip home, I probably would. So if Jordy left him in this room today, it might be in my bed tonight. Might cuddle with him. After practice, the team heads to class and hits the books, trying to maintain their cumulative GPAs of 3.5. Before and after class, the players gather in the IRC lobby, awaiting other teammates to chat amongst themselves. Don't I dress like this all the time? Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. Yes, I do. A lot of people watching goes on right now. Usually a lot of people get out of class, so kind of just wait and stare. I'm from the right lady. I'm out there looking for love. It's kind of sweet, I guess. I mean, I guess. Starving. Hopefully that's something good. After class, the team usually gets a meal at the Rock Cafe, located here on the south end of campus. <laughs> Real team favorite. Your favorite. Players try to eat as healthy as possible to remain in fit shape, but of course, there are always a few exceptions. I like to eat very healthy. He is very health conscious. As you can see, he's got a salad and everything, but then he's got to he's washing it down with a little bit of <laughs> pop saw that on. Excuse me, I have water. The next round of teammates come in now and discuss the ending of Inception and the finer points to Beauty and the Beast 3D, while Jordy describes the difference between a wolf and a wolf pack. After classes are over and bellies are full, players have different hobbies they like to partake in. Some play video games, Call of Duty and NHL hockey being the favorites. Well, I can't do it all. Pup, you're the Don't you start, don't you start, start playing that. that I was not, I was not. It's not your fault, man. While others, like star forward Matthew Kurzinger, enjoy their precious car. This girl I picked up a couple summers ago there back in the Dirty Sasky. And Went into the Humboldt uh, Dodge store there, and they hooked me up with this with this one. When I brought it home, uh, um, I brought it into my brother's garage, and, and uh, his little boy came out, and he can barely talk, and he ran his finger down the side, and he goes, "Ooh, McQueen!" So he called McQueen once in a while. Matt is on his way to the rink now 
to work on some shooting and stick handling skills. But before he hits the ice, Zinger sharpens his skates like he does before every game or practice. He goes through about three or four pairs of steel in a single season. After he is done putting the final touches on his blades, it is time to lace up and hit the ice. From sitting all the time I remember when we used to Go and play outside a Swinging on the swing set a Swaying to and from Cast the breeze and die a Simply can't be done You may have an Xbox Or a station to play But all that really matters Is to see is the day No I'll hear him play No see is the day After a good night's sleep, the boys are back at it again, 10 a.m. the following morning. You gonna fight, coach? What's that? So you getting a fight? Bowling injury. You say bowling injury? Well, Huh. Not at all, no. Typical hog. <laughs> we got a suicide pass from Trevish. Got laid out. Almost said that. I got the same line thing. You know, throughout the week we show a lot of different video clips and a lot of it is stuff from the games we played like last weekend but some of it is, is like pre-scout material for the, the team we're going to play so this week it's Notre Dame right now I'm just putting together some clips for uh, we'll meet today at 11:10 before we go on the ice and we'll have uh, I've got about 15 clips for the guys which is a little more than normal but they're pretty short clips as the team now patiently waits for coach Daniels they talk amongst themselves but as soon as 11:10 hits, they mean business. Now they got like a limping sheet too, like Northern, so you should feel comfortable, Dito, staying up <clears throat> as long as we got that forward coming back through the middle. Okay. And it's nothing we haven't seen before. They just try to work it around that side. Andres Lee will try to pop up at Sheehan on the second unit there. He might pop up in the hole. Here we are, third period, critical moment. This is late in the game. We're battling. Zara comes out. And then Garrett does a great job coming out in the shot lane, getting a huge block for us right down the stretch there. Some good solid fundamentals from Saturday night, boys. The team now works on the skills and practice that they will need in order to compete with Notre Dame. But early on into the practice, there is a stoppage. Scott Zarnhausen. Uh, came and drove the net. Uh, lost the legend there, just ran into me. Uh, I mean, uh, Pissed me off a little bit at first, because you know, I don't want to be right into it, but I uh, just driving that and lost an edge, so it wasn't really anything to do about it. Uh, hurt banged me up a little bit. The stick kind of went inside my helmet, and I don't know what happened there, but stuff happens. Although a bit shaken up, CJ Mott and Scott Zarnausen were thankfully okay and completed the rest of the practice. After the practice, the team goes about their daily rituals. One of these rituals meant to be more fun and relaxing is a jam session with the Dos Amigos. Travis White being the lead guitarist and Eric Alexander being the star vocalist. Sounds like a mix between John Mayer and Dave Matthews or something. Mr. Jones, where'd you go? Play some. You gotta do a slower tune so I can make things up. Me and Eric Alexander have actually been putting together some good tunes lately and a lot of covers. We're gonna make a sweet song for Penzi and the boys, and it's gonna be pretty, pretty freaking sweet. Like my mustache, hit a whitey. Really awesome. Early 
today we woke up around 6.30, way too early. Those amigos are terrible. Probably one of the worst bands out there. Sitting here with my buddies, Gene and Xander. Xander's on the phone, probably texting Jackie. He really loves her. Garrett's really single. I'm just trying to hang out and mingle. I do dabble in guitar as well as other things with fellow teammates, mainly uh, Slapshot Regatta with one Garrett Thompson. I think it's been key for his offensive outburst he's had this year. No! Regatta! There's the, the main house of the seniors, which is Johnston, Billens, Nelson, and Graham. Feel free to, you know, like treat it as your house, but you don't have to clean up the mess. You know, 806 loves it. Mess up everything that you can, just make it trashed. Whitey, Whitey will strap on the, uh, not goalie pads, mind you, but their actual back to the furniture of our couches in our living room. And he'll strap them on his legs with, I don't know, a makeshift glove and blocker and a tennis racket as a, as a stick. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, sorry. You gotta start it. Come on. We're got Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Trying to play keep alive. You gotta shoot, you can't pass. Garrett Thompson has been coming over a lot lately. Well, I'm sort of living here now, so I want to test that blocker. There it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> he really knows how to destroy a room, so he kind of, I would say, is the leader of the shenanigans. Man, how come you were better last time, though? What's Big up? pass. Oh! Rebound! <laughs> oh! We're scared him up. 806 loves it. That, that senior house over there loves it. And um, even though they don't bring the skill to the table that, you know, it's kind of tough to play with them. I mean, I hate to brag, but I think I'm an outstanding goalie. And, you know, he, he struggles to score, which I think in turn helps him score on the ice. Here's a shot for Lysol. They took the foot, Thompson puts it in, he scores! Wednesday morning, the team gathers back into the locker room for their final practice at home before they leave Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. for their bus ride to Notre Dame. While getting ready, the team finds an additional number on the front of their helmet. The new number placement is designed to aid officials and broadcasters by providing an additional point of player identification. Kind of a big deal now with these helmet stickers. You get one? You get one number on the front? Yeah. I don't get one either, sure. I don't, I don't know, I don't like it, CJ. We're not special. Number 24, Dom Panetta, leaves halfway through practice today in order to go to class. Get off a little bit early because I got class, so I gotta rush over there. It's a struggle, but it's me through the day. I actually uh, messed up less on the ice too now, so it's a good thing. <laughs> less practice, less messing up. Coach uh, doesn't notice me as much. <laughs> and uh, in my case, that's a good thing, but uh, I do come back after and Work out tracks by myself. This is a true hockey lift. All hockey players do it secretly just to uh, get the neck going. Billings and Nelson will kind of egg you on to, uh, to do, you know, kind of goofy stuff or whatever. And um, one of the things in their living room is uh, claim on the carpet in the living room and you say something that you can do or that you think you can accomplish or whatever it might be, then you actually have to prove that you can do it. One of the claims earlier this year, uh, Nate Milam was in the living room and said that he could do a backflip. Wait, they said I couldn't do a backflip? Um, it was pretty incredible, it was pretty cool to see and stuff, but it's pretty fun. 
As the players go home and go about their daily business, they go to bed early to rest before their four-hour bus ride. The team reports to the rink and gets on the bus at 2 p.m. Thursday. On the ride down, players do homework and talk to each other. However, the most popular trend players seem to partake in is sleeping. The bus arrives in South Bend, Indiana at approximately 6 p.m. Central Time. The team first arrives to Notre Dame's brand new $50 million Compton Family Sports Arena. After the team unloads their bags into the locker room, they idolize the magnificent rink, gazing and taking pictures of tomorrow's battlefield. Everybody heads to the hotel and grabs a nice team dinner, and heads to bed before practice at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. It is now game day, and time for the Bulldogs to get back to work and shake off their road legs with a solid practice. Before their skate, a couple Notre Dame players take the ice. After the Bulldogs practice, coaches and players split up for the afternoon until they reunite on the bus at 4 p.m. to head to the rink. Hey, hey, sorry. It's always nice when none of the room's open. The old lock us out of a room trick. <laughs> Almost all of the players get their keys to work after their first oh, attempt. Oh, it's my work. Seriously, I need to know. <laughs> you can put this time. The joke is yeah. on you. See, that's what happened. That's so Whose good. card is this? That's, that's mine. Awesome. That's the other one I threw down the hall. And it didn't work. When the guys finally get into their rooms, they rest and later on eat a team meal in the hotel dining hall. Then it's back on the bus and to the rink for their first game of the series. here tonight at the rink and uh, you know I got goosebumps uh, you know we heard it's a cello crowd and uh, going back to last game here we took a lot of penalties early and and uh, I think if we can stay away from that and play them five on five we're gonna increase our chance of, of winning the game tonight so I think if we can get the puck on net maybe get the puck on the pillows and get the rebound in the back of the net. It's always nice you know they put all that money into their rink so we kind of want to sock it to them and and then beat them and hopefully uh, when you're at the rink you're that much hungrier to do what you want to do and have a battle. Graham steps in against Tynan. The puck has been dropped, and away we go. Jay in over the line, left side. Skates right in. A shot. Rebound. The game on Friday night in Notre Dame was, I think, from my standpoint, the best team game that we had played all season long. Binkley took that shot, he went down, and you know, he's, he's a warrior out there. He got right back up and fought it off, and we were able to clear the puck, and he got off the ice. Uh, but he played the rest of the game. That's just an example right there of, of, of guys willing to sacrifice. Graham, puck loose left goal line, Lorenz shoves down, a Ferris State player. Loose puck right goal line, they score! Bonus jams it on. Soon after, Billens makes a nice play on the power play to keep the puck in Notre Dame's defensive end thus leading to the Bulldogs' second goal of the night, scored by none other than dazzling number 28, Kyle Bonus. Zarnow's left point shot, redirected in front, Bonus scores, 2-0 Ferris State. 
to get one to go in and then get another one to go in, it was, it was kind of a relief. It was it was good for the team, and I think uh, we kind of our def defense carried us the rest of the way after those two went in. The defense was key here. It was a solid effort by the team, and Billings assisted with another great play to get their third goal scored by Derek Graham. The Bulldogs went on to shut out the Fighting Irish 3 to nothing, giving Nelly his third shutout of the season and earning himself the MVP Bulldogs hard hat. A lot of guys did good tonight, a lot of good blocks out there and everything. Uh, but I'm trying to give Nelly and give a lot of good saves out there. The team gets their smiles and laughs in now, but it will get serious again real soon, tomorrow, back in Big Rapids. Well, it's completely like obvious that it's mine, you know? As soon as you see it. Yeah. Is it as cool as you are? Why not? Stretching is key to a successful career. Stay flexible, stay fit. And it would come to maybe another aspects of life. Let's wait and stretch. You get here at 6 o'clock and this whole thing is full. When the team is done with their morning stretch and brisk workout, they head over to the dressing room to watch last night's game tape, eat lunch, and then show up back to the rink two hours early to get ready for the rematch at 7. Tonight is an excited Andy Huff's first game back since he tore his MCL January 14th against Alaska at home. Yeah, but I... <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> too, nervous, too nervous to talk right now. Oh, your little interview about how you feel playing tonight. Can't do that. Come on. I'm not known for my speaking ability. Yeah, are you... What are you known for? My not speaking ability. Did you see him on the second goal when you scored, he broke his stick on the pole. Nice! And then he slashes it on the ice. But when he got mad, he skates off, picks up the blade, and skates off. But when he got mad that one time, he slammed the stick and then he skated off the ice. When he threw that pizza, he yeah. never stick. Yeah. As the fans pile in, the Bulldogs dress and get ready for their chance to sweep the Irish. Any dogs in the house? Any dogs in the house? What time's it? 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 Notre Dame came out hard and physical, but the Bulldogs had the perfect response. Also, Charlie score! Nate Milam! Not more than a minute later, Billings puts another one in from the tops of the circles. Billings, Billings sidesteps, walks in, wrists a shot, score! The Bulldogs held their two goal lead almost the rest of the period. With six seconds to go, Notre Dame scores their first goal of the two-game series. Season 14-4-1 off the draw. John Dwight takes the shot. Shea with a try. He scores! Ooh, that can be a backbreaker. The Bulldogs now head to the locker room and prepare for the second period. Bulldogs came out flying, scoring a goal in the first five minutes of the period. An anxious Andy Huff even picked up an assist on Kane's goal in his first game back. From then on, the Bulldogs shut the Irish out the rest of the game. They scored two more goals, one by Derek Teddy Graham and the other by Jordy J-Bomber Johnston. This earned the Bulldogs a 5-1 win, a sweep against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and a number one national ranking 
for the first time in Bulldogs history. schedule around between practice and, and classes, you know, sometimes I mean, even like this guy here, get wore out, you know, in the IRC in between classes, but other than that, I like to hang out with the guys, you know, and get a little, uh, get a little bit, bit of a mind bender, mind control going in with some of the teammates over here, you know, a few friends over here. 